Welcome to this exciting edition of Come to the Light. I'm Denny Hartford and I'd like to take you today to one of the most intriguing places on earth, the city of Ouagadougou, a lively and very friendly town that is the capital of the sub-Saharan nation of Burkina Faso. Now, I could be here to see the beautiful Grand Cathedral. Of course, I could be here for the Fespaco Festival, a biannual film festival that is rapidly becoming one of Africa's key cultural events. Or I simply could be here to enjoy the hospitality and energy of any one of thousands of restaurants, clubs, and shops in this city that never goes to sleep. But as pleasant as all of these diversions are, yes, I'm here in Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso, to introduce you to Colonel Say Zerbo. Say Zerbo was born in Tugan, a small city in what was then the French colony of Upper Volta in West Central Africa. Now the independent nation of Burkina Faso, the country was of course then unaware that the birth of this baby on August 27, 1932, was the beginning of one of its most intriguing stories. The story of an adventurous boy who would grow into a skilled soldier, a popular president, and later a persuasive apologist for Christianity. Say's interest in the military life was natural. His father was enrolled in the French army and saw combat in World War II. Following the war, Say was sent to special schools for children of military men, first in Kati and then in the country of Senegal. <laughs> In 1950, I was enrolled in the French army. Two years later, as a corporal, I had to go to battle in Indochina. 1954, with the end of the conflict, I came back home and my career really started from then. By 1954, Say Zerbo had already been promoted to the rank of sergeant, and his commanders selected him for special military training in Paris. He learned quickly and well, and his career was marked by rich success. He moved from a company commander to major to regiment commander, all the while demonstrating diligence, integrity, and a devotion both to his men and his country. It was not a surprise when Say Zerbo was named the Army's General Commander-in-Chief. Throughout his military service, Say Zerbo's highest desire was to be of useful service to his country. Poverty, famine and malnutrition, lack of education and development. These and other problems were grievously damaging to his people. As the National Defense Minister, Colonel Say Zerbo was able to extend his service to his people by solidifying and improving both the readiness of the nation's military and the image of his country. As a foreign affairs minister, Zerbo began a life of extensive travel, moving in diplomatic circles all over Africa and eventually all over the world. He served in this capacity well. His military and diplomatic life has produced many important friendships with leaders in Africa and far beyond. there is a sudden and dramatic coup. The existing government is dissolved and Colonel Say Zerbo becomes the new president of Upper Volta.
the presidency of Say Zerbo is vividly remembered by visits he made to the communities. He seemed always on the move, and even the most inaccessible village would show up on his visitation itinerary. When I came to be the head of the nation, I was very busy. I wanted to know the needs of the people, so I went out in the communities. I was in sixth grade when the president was visiting my hometown. All the students were out in the street to meet him. One guy came with a bicycle that he transformed into a moped. To encourage that initiative, the president went to him and rode the bike. I was fortunate to see the community's desperation and the number of problems they face every day. They welcomed me with such joy. Zerbo came as the people's president with an eloquent exhortation to responsibility, hard work, and national pride. <laughs> my ministers and my security people all picked up stones to help construct the road. Our ultimate sacrifice as leaders was to be a good example to all the people. In the military, we used to say that the good examples always come from above. In battle, if a commander is not responsible, his army will be worse. In a third world country, roads are problems for transportation, even transportation of crops from one region to another proved very difficult to transport. I felt the necessity to improve the transportation infrastructure. With regards to religion, Say Zerbo was known as a devout Muslim. Historically, animism has been the primary religion in West Africa. Animism is a rather undefined religious perspective, but it usually involves a belief in spirits which inhabit the living things of the environment, an animal, a tree, even a body of water. And those spirits generally mean ill to human beings. Thus, they must be bought off with spells, magical amulets and objects the intercession, perhaps, of a shaman or medicine man. In Burkina Faso, these animist beliefs have, for a small percentage of the people, given way to Christianity, but involving many more Burkina Bays, to Islam. My grandfather, Jojo Zerbo was the first convert from Aninism to Islam and Tuga. My parents were also Muslims. When I was seven years old, they sent me to Quranic school. Daytime I had to go to public schools and in the evening to the Quranic master's house where all the students gathered around a wood fire to learn and memorize the Quran. Then my father moved to Tumbo II, a great and known Muslim center. Once in Tumbaktu, I've been given to a Quranic master, Aniti Yola, who was the grandson of one of the 300 saints around the city of Tumbo II. 